Okay, thank you all for joining and thanks for uh, participating in the Atlantex Virtual Marketplace towards Industry 4.0 opportunities for the textile industry. Uh, today uh, we are going to start a little bit with the uh, how rules that you have been seeing during the, these five weeks. So uh, first of all, thank you all for attending and we hope that uh, during the session uh, the rest of the people will start joining as well. Uh, we kindly ask all participants to turn off their, their cameras and their mics and as they are speaking. Uh, also, as a fair warning, this session will be recorded. If you don't wish to be identified, please edit your details and, uh, uh, and from the platform and don't turn on your camera. Also, the, for the Q&A sessions that we will have during the whole webinar, you can place them, the questions in the chat and we will come back to them at the selected time slot. So after the different presentations, we will have some dedicated space for Q&A. Please write uh, questions in the chat and we will address them there. Also, I would like to remind you that you can still invite other attendees to participate in, in virtual meetings until the last day of the marketplace, till the 24th of February. You can easily do that through the, through the Clamtex virtual marketplace platform. And with that, I would like to uh, introduce the agenda for today. Today's session is dedicated to uh, the potential of virtual reality in industry. And we will have an inspiration success story from uh, Jose Antonio Tornero from the UPC, the Technical University of Catalonia. And then we will have a second block uh, dedicated to textile future challenges with two companies, uh, textile companies, Simpas and Estamparia. Alberto, and finally, we will have a blog dedicated to advanced manufacturing solutions to empower the virtual reality in the industry by Orinox and uh, Neadvance. After that, we will have the blog that we have each week for B2B meetings. At the end of the different sessions, we will have the, uh, time for Q&A. So we will have time to answer the different questions you may have to the different speakers. Also, I would like to remind you that you uh, can also uh, you can also you can also post questions and contact the speakers through the platform. So feel free to contact them during the session or afterwards to arrange B2B meetings. Uh, and from today's announcements. Here is a marketplace. You can find over 59 opportunities that you can select and chat with the different participants and schedule B2B meetings. And finally, I would like to give a heads up of the next week uh, webinar, which will be the last one and will be dedicated to the funding opportunities for SMEs uh, from European programs. So we will have presentations from the Horizon Europe, the EIC program, InvestEU single market program, all presented by the European Commission representatives and that with the main programs dedicated a focus towards SME support and funding. And then we'll have a dedicated block for programs specifically focused for textile and advanced manufacturing SMEs with EIT manufacturing, elite program and Galactica. Those are opportunities that will that are either open or will open soon. So it's a really nice way to fin uh, finalize the the session of the Atlantic Virtual Marketplace. And after being said that, I would like to invite uh, Jose Antonio Tornero from UPC to uh, to turn on his camera. Uh, he will be presenting. Uh, I size you, a project that was uh, developed within that university. Uh, Jose Antonio Torneo is Associate Professor and Research Manager in the Technical University of Catalonia. He's head of the of the systems laboratory in the Institute for Textile Research and works in projects related to the development of textile manufacturing and ICT applied to the textile industry. In this last field, he has coordinated two European projects related to the application of artificial intelligence and image analysis to support new textile business opportunities. He's also co-founder and CTO of the spin-off company, uh, Seviotex. And with that said, I would like you to uh, share your screen with the presentation and you can turn on your camera, uh, your mic.
Thank you very much, Josep. Just one moment, I go to, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, if you can make it full screen, perfect. Okay, okay perfect. So the floor is yours. Okay, well, so uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for, for attending to, to this session. And also, I would like to, to thank you, especially the organizers at Clamtex, uh, for inviting me to share this, uh, this experience. I hope that it will be interesting for, for everybody. Uh, well, as uh, you said, commented, I'm a research manager in the Textile Research Institute uh, in Texter, belonging to the Technical University of, of Catalonia. We are a textile institute that with more than 60 years of history. Uh, we work in more or less all the fields in the, in the value chain of, of the textile sector. But the point is that uh, since uh, 2008, uh, we started uh, working in ICT applied to textiles. Uh, and this is something that has been evolving with time and, and now um, everybody calls uh, Industry 4.0 and, and well, this, uh, this kind of things. But in the end, uh, uh, we are talking about the application of artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, Internet of Things, image analysis and so on to a, to a, let's say, a classical sector as textile. And we found since these years that there is a lot uh, of a space to, to do very, very nice uh, innovations and improvements in the, in the daily business of the textile sector. Um, today, uh, I would like to talk about a specific experience. Um, it, is, it was based on an European funded project in Horizon 2020. But it's worth to remark that it was uh, uh, started by a company called Ideal. It's a company based in Italy, uh, near to, to Milano. And uh, well, it was based on the idea of the company. And uh, in the end, it's also worth to remark that uh, the project was, was executed in 2017 and 2018. But since then, the company is exploiting the results, is exploiting exclusively these results, and it's uh, it's doing business with them. I mean, it's uh, it's earning money, and it's uh, it's progressing. So uh, this is a sample of a of a very successful European project and a company that is totally exploiting the the outcomes of the project. Uh, anyway, uh, well, it, it has. It, uh, some some technical and scientific uh, difficulties, as, as you will see. So, in order to support the company to bring it to the market, um, we uh, we did a consortium of uh, of uh, six partners uh, and two universities: Technical University of Munich, uh, UPC, indeed, um, two ICT companies, Ideal itself and Nolonix, and a couple of uh, end users. Okay, you will see now uh, how each of them participated in the project. During the presentation, I will talk either about Morpheus. Morpheus was the acronym of the project, but the commercial product is called I Size You. Uh, it has its, its own web page and it's a, it's a complete uh, product and you can visit the web page when, where you will see all the details anyway. So, sorry, here there is, uh, sorry, there is a uh, one slide that was uh, by mistake hidden. Okay, so which is the problem that we are facing? The problem is that uh, this is something that probably most of you uh, have a real experience. The point is that, uh, as you know, e-commerce is is growing exponentially in the last years. But um, uh, e-commerce is something that was quickly uh, adopted for things like uh, technology, for buying computers, mobile, these kind of things. But for fashion, it has um, some constraints, and the main one was uh, the, the impossibility to know if a, if a piece of cloth uh, it's okay for you or not. So in the in the end, the problem is that, as you know, what most people do is uh, to buy not only one size of the of the piece of cloth, but maybe two or even three different sizes, and then they return back uh, those sizes which are not fitting uh, them directly. This is something that many people do because in, in most cases, even returning the goods is for free, or maybe you can also return them directly to, to the shop. But the point is that this has a, a hidden, very deep impact in both uh, environment and also in the business of, of many companies. 
uh, if we take a look to the to the official figures, uh, the last ones that we found was, were for 2016 with uh, source in the European Commission. The point is that there were more than 400 million pieces of clothes returned in 2016. Uh, if we translate this to, to weight of goods, uh, we are talking about 64,000 tons of goods moved per year. And if we translate this to the CO2 generated by the transport itself, we are talking about more than uh, 11,000 tons of CO2 yearly. The point is that these figures are for 2016, but also we know that, for example, in 2020, uh, even uh, impulsed by the pandemics, the uh, yearly growth of the online e-commerce just for the three first quarters of the year was about 37%. So we are talking about a, a huge growth of the of the sector. So these figures are even worse now. Uh, this is uh, affecting uh, especially to fashion, but uh, also it's also applying to other goods like, for example, furniture. Okay. So what we uh, proposed to do, the, the idea of the of the company of Ideal is the name of the company, was to create um, a kind of ecosystem uh, based on the morphology of the consumer. When we talk about the morphology, we, we are talking about complete morphology. It means that everything which is related to know exactly the uh, the body dimensions of the of the user. If the companies know the exact body dimensions of the of the user, um, they can tune their production and their business to this specific um, to these specific uh, dimensions. This is something with uh, immediate uh, impact in the user uh, in the companies and also in the designers uh, who can make use of this information in order to tune uh, their designs. So this is not only applied to fashion, this applies to, to sharing economy, things like sh shared car, uh, automotive, interior design, architecture, etc. But fi fashion is maybe the, the, the most clear uh, field with high impact. Okay? It's also worth to remark that this scheme of a returning goods uh, after they are purchased online, it's something that the big players can afford usually, but it's also something that it's very difficult to manage by uh, small uh, sellers uh, or small vendors uh, for two reasons. The first one is for the cost of the of the returning back the, the goods that usually is more difficult to afford by small players, and also for the difficulty to manage the stock. Because when you have uh, a piece of cloth coming back, you have to reintroduce it in the in the stock of the company, and this is not so easy. Also, you have to check the the the, the quality and the status of the good, and it's it's complicated, and reduces significantly the um, the competitiveness of the small companies of SMEs in the fashion sector. Okay. So the creation of this uh, ecosystem that I will explain in, in which consists, the benefits are mainly three, or, or let's say the, the utility that it can have. The first one is, is, the, more, is the most clear, is that it can uh, serve for the final user, for the final consumer, to select which is the best design and uh, from something which is already available in an online store. So you can, uh, for example, know which is the, the size that will uh, have the best fit for your body when you are, uh, when you are uh, buying a trousers or a t-shirt or something like this. The second one is the possibility also to adapt goods that are already in the, in the market and have some customization possibilities and can be adapted to a specific uh, user morphology. This is the second case, and it's uh, of course for something like um, uh, made to measure, which is more specific to the third one. But it's also especially useful for the sharing economy model. Uh, let's imagine a, a shared car that automatically adapts to your body the position of the rear view mirrors or the position of the seats when you enter in this in this car without the necessity to lose time to do that. And the third benefit is um, to design uh, goods from scratch based on the morphology uh, of the user. And this is what it's usually called the made to measure, applying to, to clothing, but also uh, applies to more specialized uh, items of clothes like personal protection items, uh, sport, uh, dedicated uh, dresses, and this kind of products. So to, to understand exactly in which consists the, the platform, uh, what is what the user uh, uh, experience? What is the, the view of the users? In the end, the user sees that there is a mobile app 
And with this mobile app, you can take uh, some photos of the user. You will see afterwards how. And then you will uh, create, will have created a profile, online profile, uh, which will contain uh, your specific morphology. With this account, you can afterwards enter in online commerces or in design uh, sites, etc. And then you can ask for goods that are adapted to you, or you can buy products that you are, which you are sure that will adapt, that will fit perfectly to your body. What is uh, what the designer or the online seller experience? Basically, uh, they will experience that they can integrate easily the functionality of iSizeU into uh, their their CMS or their online uh, shop uh, systems. Shop systems, they can integrate as a login, and afterwards, they need to profile their products. Of course, they need to uh, they need to introduce somehow which are the measures of their products, and then the system provides the matching between the user and the product. So the seller or the designer should um, experience uh, a reduction in returns when online selling uh, and an increase of customization possibilities and in the end, an increase of competitiveness. Okay, so I'm going to show you a video. It's just a one minute video length uh, that shows which is the uh, experience more or less this is the the app and basically you need to, to uh, introduce the eight and the weight in the app and then uh, you have to make a couple of photos from the back side as you can see in these images right now and then you have also to make a photo from from the side of the profile you will see it the app of course helps you to do it uh, step by step so it is very easy you do it again uh, from the side Okay, and then as I will remark afterwards, the system works just with the edges detected. It doesn't work with the, with the complete profile for confidentiality issues. Then uh, after that, um, the system is able to profile to the to the designer or the seller. So sorry, I wanted to put it in pause eh? here. The system is able to provide to the designer or, or the vendor a complete statistics of about the, the measures of the of the customers or well, the, the exact measures of one specific customer. And then the, uh, the vendor can use it in the best way that they require. You have complete statistics, information about the measures of the person and so on. This is a video that is in YouTube. You can find it just uh, searching for iSizeU. So um, how it works basically? Well, basically you have this mobile app. You have to take a, a picture from the backside and a picture from the from the profile. You have to introduce in just your eight and your weight, and then you have also the possibility to introduce uh, some personal preferences. The uh, the app has been uh, improving since 2018 when the first version was available. It's available also worth to say in for both Android and, and iOS. And then you can uh, introduce your personal preferences. As you know, people uh, usually um, have uh, special preferences for them. Someone want, wants to, to dress more loose, uh, someone wants to dress more tight, and you can more or less specify your preferences. And the system can also learn from the, from the previous selections of, of the user, just to try to adapt, not only base it on the, on the measures of the user, but also base it on the personal preferences of the user. For the same body and, and one preference, uh, one size can be good, but for exactly for the same body and, and, and the same size, other person would like to prefer one size more or less because they want to, to dress more loose or more tight. So this is also take it into account. How it works? Well, it's um, the basic is very easy, but uh, of course the background, the scientific and technical background is not so easy. The point is that um, the system, after taking the two pictures, just work with the edge of the picture. This is for conf for uh, privacy issues. Um, the edge is uh, is detected and, and drawn inside the mobile. Is not so the original picture is not sent uh, out of the mobile. Uh, in this way, we are keeping the, the privacy of the user because no photos of you are sent. This is important because, of course, in order to have uh, good measures, when you take the pictures, you have to dress tight dresses. 
and and uh, and it's in the privacy is something that could make people reject to use the, the app so it, it was important to, to to take this into account after you have the two pictures uh, from these two two dimensional um, uh, pictures you can extract the complete three dimensional dimensions of the body just with the pictures will not be enough and this is why uh, you also need the uh, the eight and the weight of the person and then this is also not enough to have the complete profile and then uh, here it comes the key aspect of the of the platform i size you and it is that it works with um, with application of artificial intelligence and morphotypes assignment the idea is that uh, the human body that the, uh, the, the persons are divided into what it's called morphotypes maybe uh, many of you already know about them the point is that there are there are some um, standard shapes of the human body let's say it it also depends uh, sometimes on the um, on the origin of the person but in general uh, for uh, women if i'm not wrong i think that there are about nine main morphotypes and for for men uh, I, for male i think that uh, seven there are also some sub morphotypes they are called as uh, we saw well in this case it 108 c 108 they are different morphotypes the point is that with the partial information that you take from the mobile app um, the system is able to detect to which morphotype belongs that person um, this means that with this reduced set of measures, uh, there are some constraints that will be followed by this body. Because if you belong to a specific morphotype, this one for example, there are some relationship that will be uh, followed by the body. For example, you have a, a length of, of the arm, that means that the, the leg will have a, a specific proportion of the arm. So what is interesting is that from a reduced data set, you are able to get the complete three-dimensional dimensions of the body and then you need of course a matching algorithm that makes the relationship between the the body measures and the product dimensions all these parts are provided by by the platform i size you <clears throat> so in the end uh, although the final user just see uh, a mobile app and a login in a web page um, the complete system, the complete platform requires many components to, to, to build all this ecosystem. The first one is the mobile app, is the more is the more visible, the more evident, that collect the user measures and preferences. Then you need to build many databases with the morphotypes themselves, with the user measures, with the user preferences, and also with the product profiles in, in many cases, because this can be provided as a service to the final users. This product profile could be stored both in the CMS of the vendor or in the databases of the of the company uh, ideal. Then it was necessary to develop many algorithms. The refined algorithm, which is the one that um, obtain all the user measures from limited information. Also the matching algorithm that assigns a product to the user uh, measures obtained by the previous algorithm. And also the extended algorithm that assigns a product based not only on the measures, but also on the personal preferences of the of the person. Also, uh, machine learning is applying to the, these last two ones in order to improve the, the matching of the, of the system. Uh, of course, uh, it's necessary to provide the servers to manage the database access and the matching modules. And then, um, last but not least, the, uh, all the add-ons necessary to integrate the, this capability, this size suggestion capability, in the most standard e-commerce platforms like PrestaShop, for example. This is something that was developed. Um, and also the models to the, the backend uh, to allow the vendors to introduce the dimensions of the, of the products. So all of these uh, components were necessary to be developed in order to have the complete functionality of the system. It's important because in the end, in many cases as final users, we just see a mobile app and it looks like you only have to develop the mobile app. But um, in, in many cases, you, you need to build many models working in the background to, to make everything work. This is a more graphical uh, scheme of how these different components are are interacting between them as you can see is something which is not, not easy you have just the, the app in the left side of the, of the of the image but also you need to put these uh, databases and the server functionalities the um, also the plugins for the for the e-commerce uh, systems 
well, this is for many for different use cases, and also the databases for the for the products. In the end, what the, the vendor sees is that it's possible to connect the e-commerce platform di directly with the Morpheo service. So all this right side of the of the scheme is something that is located in the company exploiting the system. And it's uh, uh, from the e-commerce platform, you just receive a login of the user and um, and uh, and the product that he's aiming to, to purchase and then the, the platform is returning back the most appropriate uh, size and even product for the for the user. Uh, during the project, was uh, developed a pilot uh, inside the, um, the online selling web of the partner Piacenza. Piacenza is a is a textile company based in in Vieja, in uh, near to Milan, close to Milano. It's a it's a manufacturer of high end, high class uh, cashmere products. And they sell online, and they do not have a, a big volume because uh, the, the, it's, a, it's a, let's say, a high level in prices as well. But it was a good pilot. The point is that they uh, introduced in their in their system the possibility to buy using the ISISU system. It was integrated, and um, the outcome was very good. In the end, uh, the use for the user is very very easy. This is a key point. It, uh, it's it's uh, mandatory to have something which is not complicated for the user. So in the end, as you know, when you are purchasing uh, cloth, clothing online, usually what you see is the, the piece of cloth, of course, and you can see the different, different sizes that you can select and you have just add them to the cart, okay? The point is that if you have this uh, this icon in the web, you can log in with your profile in SSU. Once you are logged in, uh, you will remain logged during your or your session. And um, if you are logged in, you will have immediately a suggestion for your size. It is uh, remarked into places. Here, just uh, squared in green. And here it says, uh, hello, Ferran. The size suggested for you is uh, 50. Okay. Also, it can, it can make, uh, this is the easiest possibility. The system, of course, can make a lot of uh, recommendations, but sometimes it's better to keep it as easy as possible because it could tell you your size could be 50 if you want it more tight or 52 if you want it more more loose or we do not recommend this product for you because it will not fit to you based on your on your size and your preferences so it can provide quite accurate uh, recommendation as well okay. the um, the experience was very good was very good but uh, anyway i will explain you the um, the let's say the lessons learned in the end which was uh, interesting anyway but the impact in users uh, was very clear was the first one the increase in the simplicity of the purchasing process because as you know when you are uh, buying clothes uh, online usually you have many doubts when you are selecting the, the size it's not common that you you know this is exactly my size and this is what i want maybe in the in the big uh, um, sellers change you you go to the you go to the um, to the shop you know your your size and then more or less if it is the same seller you know that it will match to you but this is usually a, a, a no-go point when you are purchasing online so this was uh, uh, highly uh, improved with the project also the convenience feeling uh, this is important when you are selling online you need not only to, to sell but you need to keep the the good feeling in the in the user you need to to, to make the user feel that they are doing the right choice uh, in the end when they receive the good they are going to, to check it but while they are buying it's important to keep this satisfaction uh, feeling during all the process and this is um the, this assessment from my size you is increasing this convenience feeling and uh, also of course there is a an increase of the a reduction of the effort after purchasing because you do not have to return anything. Uh, in most cases, in, in without a size, you, you need to return those sizes which are not good to you. In this case, if you have uh, been successful in the first one, it's not necessary to, to return back. So this was for the end user, but which is the impact in the, in the company, in the designer or, or the seller in the case of fashion? Well, it was expected an 80% of reduction of, of returns, uh, which of course has a, a high impact 
in the uh, cost related to the um, to the logistics and the management of this return for both the logistics and also for the uh, insertion again in the stock of the company uh, but also there are some uh, marginal or not so expected um, impact which was the 20 percent of cost decrease due to an exploited overperformance of products. This is linked to uh, the next two points, which is the reduced environmental cost due to wasted prototyping and a stock left over in grown size. The point is that if you are entering in a market and you know previously which are the main sizes and, and body profiles that are purchasing your goods, you can also produce in the right sizes um, for these uh, target people which means that you can have a, a decrease in the stock left over in, in room sizes in your in your warehouses okay and also for design is important because you can you can also target the design of your goods to to the uh, to the right to the right uh, morphotypes which could depend and not only on on your target um, age of the people uh, morphotype but also on the regional uh, on the regional basis which is not is is the, the morphotypes and the, the average uh, body sizes are not the same in Spain, for example, than in, in, in Germany, as an example. And this can be used for design uh, into the project. Um, what is important, uh, anyway, is that um, initially in the project, we can come back to this, to this slide to explain this. The main impact inside the project was expected to be uh, in the suggestion of the best size when selling online, but for the company and the, um, and the, the sector that is uh, giving business to the company in the end is not this one. Um, the problem with this uh, with this application of providing the best size is that uh, well there are many problems uh, that uh, must be remarked. This is very nice, just commenting this point, but. Um, uh, there are some constraints. The first one is that the vendor has to profile in more detail their products. They have to introduce by hand the, um, the size of the products, not only to say that it is uh, L, XL, M, S, whatever, but probably you need to improve to give a little bit more detail. The platform provides automatic tools to, to give this, uh, this data, but anyway, it's necessary to add some additional effort here. This on one hand. On the other hand, as you know, in SET sometimes it's not who has the best product, but which is the product more adopted by people. And in the end, this is not exactly related to the quality of, of, the, of the system suggestion, or size suggestion, uh, but it's maybe if you are in the right place in the, in the right moment. So this is some kind of race, and nobody knows who is going to, to win it. And maybe I have explained this, this application of mobile and this platform, and maybe you have seen that in the last couple of years there are many applications and many systems very similar to this one that has uh, that uh, have appeared in the market uh, probably this was the first one being done with the mobile but now i can say there that there are about three or four systems very similar to this one entering the market and one of them is being developed by amazon itself um, so in the end, the problem is that uh, the industry wants something which is, can be called uh, as a an standard, uh, and this is um, this is something that re requires money marketing to vendors in order to be adopted. Uh, so the company is working in this point, but uh, it's still not adopted by by too many vendors. So the point is that the company is making business, is doing business, and it's it's. Uh, it's having good business, but not with this application, but with the other two ones. They have already closed agreements, commercial agreements with uh, with uh, some companies up to now, in which they are using the uh, the ISISU system for um, for um, doing made to measures of products, and um, especially I think that there is only one for more standard clothes for for jackets. Okay. But the other ones are especially for sport and uh, personal protection uh, clothes, in which are very important to have something which is very well adapted to the to the body of the of the person. The point is that if you pretend you intend to 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 buy online to purchase online, for example, a, a car race suite, 
it's very important that it adapts perfectly to your body. And if you want to buy it online, it's something which is expensive and probably you will have problems to buy it online. So if you use this application, if you are going to buy this uh, car racing suite, uh, the platform will tell you to, to download this application and use it, and then you will uh, get exactly the suite that, that you need. Um, and this is working very, very good, also for personal protection, in which, for example, for firemen, uh, it's important to have something which is comfortable in the conditions that they are working. So um, the final experience was that the project was successful, the system is working very well, but not exactly adapted to the initial uh, main application, which was size suggestion when purchasing online, but more to the made to measure and good adapting. It's also interesting to remark that um, the system was uh, adopted also by for furniture, in which we did a pilot with IDME, a center in Valencia for furniture, in which uh, you were able to purchase in a, in a web page uh, a chair, a chair uh, that uh, and uh, knowing exactly if it adapts better for you or not. Uh, as you know, it's not the same for a person of 168 or uh, 190 to, to buy a to buy a chair, it, is, it can be very uh, uncomfortable if, no, if you don't buy the, the right one. So in the end, uh, the project was, I go again to the, to the consortium, was carried out by these six partners. Um, to develop the first version of the platform, we need the collaboration of two universities for the image analysis, the artificial intelligence application, two ICT providers, Solonix and ADL, and two end users to, um, to check the the, the performance of, of the system, let's see. So in the end, uh, the, the system is completely available in the market. It's uh, fully supported by the company Ideal. All the information is in this web, I size you. Anyway, uh, feel free if you, you are interested in, in knowing more about it to contact me directly by email or to enter in this uh, website and you can contact directly uh, with the company and make business with them. If you if you want, so uh, thank you very much, and I keep uh, open uh, at your disposal for any question. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, brilliant presentation. Uh, I would like to th thank you for presenting this experience and this success story. And we have a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, one of them. It's addressed, so from the product side, uh, brand or manufacturer, how, it's, how is, it, is it to collect the product measures in order to match a consumer product? Is there is some data that is available for uh, to match that, uh, that? And how do you match consumer with product? Well, then the first one is that, uh, as I commented, um, usually the, the vendor or, or the manufacturer has many uh, many measures. You have the S, M, L, XL, and so on. There are some rules, let's say, to calculate these these measures. But the problem is that, as you know, different manufacturers can work with these rules in a different way. So the company Ideal provided a background in a backend interface uh, that helps to automate in the, the measures. For example. For a, for a pullover, uh, you can put that the XL has this, this measure of here, the, the length of the arms, the, the diameter of, the, of the, the, the arms as well. And if you insert one of them, the system will automatically uh, help you to, to fill all, all the others. So the work is not so high, but there is some work and you need to take the measures by hand. This has been the, the, the main bottleneck in order to adapt it to, to the vendors online. On the other hand, to make the match between the body measures and the, and the product, this is something that is in a specific model of, uh, of Ideal, of ISIZU, and uh, it's done basically with, uh, with machine learning, based on, on previous experience, on the personal preferences of the, of the user, and in, in, in objective measures of the body and the, and the product. But it's, uh, it belongs absolutely to the, to the background of the company. And it's the main black box of the company, let's say. Okay, and another question I have in the chat is, what is the business model of ISIZU? Well, they make the... Um, the company, uh, as far as I know, because uh, since the project ended, I, I keep in contact with uh, Alessandro Canepa, is the CEO of the, of the company, and uh, more or less I'm updated, but not completely. As far as I know, I think that they have closed agreements with three different companies. And the agreement, uh, they are based on on, um, on uh, a specialized agreement with uh, any company in which they agree uh, exactly 
uh, how do they um, they have the uh, the income uh, to be honest i don't know exactly which is the business model in terms of how do they get the, the income i don't know if they are taking uh, fixed fees or they have some percentage of sales and this is something to discuss with mr canepa and you can contact directly with him to know how to proceed we just focus on the technological part of the, of the project okay, and it's working you. it's working yeah. from the business point of view okay and i have a last question uh, about the platform whether it could be adapted to other sectors like foodware for instance because it's something that uh, also mm -hmm. there's a lot of difficulties this in finding the right size Probably could be adapted, but with uh, with uh, a medium development effort, because now the the platform is very focused on body body shapes and the, the food are not considered. So uh, the platform uh, doesn't measure, doesn't give you a, a measure of the food because usually you have it. Um, of course, could be done, but you uh, the company would need to readapt the image uh, analysis algorithms and the morphotype algorithms uh, just to the food sector. Probably it's possible, but it's something to, to agree with uh, with interested parts. Okay, um, and my last question, that's mine from my side, it's uh, given the COVID situation that we have faced during this year, the retail online has soared. I don't know if uh, this also was successful for iSizeU to have more potential customers due to the uh quarantines for the clothing once they fit, uh, you use them in the fitting rooms or some stores not allowing to use the fitting rooms even i don't know if that has impacted positively to the i size you company i know that uh, their business uh, uh, has grown in the last year in 2020 even with the pandemics but i also know that it uh, that this growth has been uh, based on the made to measure sector not on the on the uh, on the massive online selling sector also uh, as i commented you there are many competitors in the market right now and they are doing marketing uh, a lot of marketing work in order to to be adapted but it's it's complicated because in the end it's something that you need to adapt in many online commerces in order to to make the people uh, adopted massively and well they are working on that but it's not so easy but pandemics let's say but for some kind of in general for online selling uh, has been good and it has been also the case for ADL, as far as I know. Okay. Okay, and then I just got another question from the chat, the last one. Uh, could the system I size you solve a little bit the, the difference of the different sizes among the different countries? So the uh, US has one standard for measures, uh, Europe has another, within Europe you have several sizes. So even within the same brand, you may have different sizing by absolutely the absolutely and then this was one of the main intentions of the system to to try to to save this this gap also uh, it's important to remark that there are some privacy issues here in order to adapt the the right morphotypes when you are calculating the measures from the limited data set of the pictures you need to to do some questions to the user like the eight and the weight uh, in, a, in an ideal situation, it would be interesting to ask the user about his um, his race, I think is the name in, in English, if you are Asian or Caucasian or or things like that. The problem is that this is a, this has a strong privacy issues and from the uh, from the data protection um, mechanisms, and it's, it's very uh, legacy and it's very complicated and difficult to ask to the people to, to sensitive data. And this is absolutely sensitive data. So you need to figure out from the pictures um, <laughs> and the eight and the weight uh, these. Uh, and it's working very well, but in a perfect world, uh, in different countries could be good to, to work with the morphotypes of these countries. Yeah, I think that the race you can only ask it legally in the US, not in no, Europe. Exactly. And may, okay. Maybe I know that there are many issues, but it's like uh, also uh, it has application in in biomedical um, in biomedical uh, sector. The problem is that even the system could be used to to get some pathologies from the from the person or just to the uh, to do things like prothesis and things like that. But the problem is that if you are able to detect um, to detect the pathologies from the user you are entering in a very very difficult privacy uh, and sensitive data area. So it's something to yeah. talk with the different users about that. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for all your presentation and all the answers that you provided. Uh, we'll now continue with the next uh, section, so the textile future needs. And I would like to invite Salvador to Salvador Aymeric to to join the floor and present, uh, make the presentation about Timpasa and how do they see the virtual reality and and uh, augmented reality in their company. So Salvador, thank you very much for being here and I'll give you the floor. Okay, thank you very much to give me the opportunity to present uh, how to, uh, we, we expect uh, about the virtual images and the virtual and augmented reality in our, in our business. Uh, oops, I start, uh, oops. Okay. Well, I start to introduce uh, our company. Our company is Timpasa, Timpasa y Pasa Manaria. Uh, we are in La Selva del Camp in Tarragona, in southern, in southern part of, uh, of the Catalan region in Spain. Uh, we are manufacturers of, of curtain tape, uh, ribbons, and cords. Uh, our company. Our history, we are part of um, the holding of the Industrial Algodonera, Liasa. Um, this is a, a, a traditional company uh, that, uh, that started in, in 1918, uh, 1918 the, in, uh, in, in, around Reus, in this part of Catalonia. And uh, Simpasa started uh, at the same time of, uh, of Liasa. Uh, and uh, in 1961, uh, we start to, to, to manufacture uh, tapes, curtain tapes. Uh, and in 1977, uh, we started to be an independent company, uh, a part of, of LIASA. In, in, uh, in our history, in, in 1980, uh, we started to, to sell the, 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 the curtain tapes with the brand it means that uh, we start to present in, in the market and that the curtain times as a product uh, with uh, the, the the value it's, uh, the, the, the 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 most the, the most added added value and in our company is a, is a company that always are in innovating uh, things in our 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 company have uh, and had Patents granted in in Spain and in Europe, and we invented uh, the pockets, the system to 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 sew pockets in a, in, a, in a tapes. We started to to have a system to for gathering uh, tapes for curtains, and uh, we were one of the most uh, innovating companies in the, in this business in Europe uh, till now. Uh, most of the companies that are producing tapes, curtain tapes over the world, are using our technology, the, the technology that invented uh, Timpasa uh, a lot of years ago. And also in terms of in innovation, our company in, in 1989 started to use the ERP and started to, um, to, to, to use, uh, to, to, implemented automatic system automatic the automatization in our in our in our factory and well in our a part of our history in our history we started in, in 2005 to to diversify our market our business and uh, one of the markets that uh, we start uh, was in agriculture in agriculture market we started to to produce tapes for agriculture uses, as as you you can look in the, the, to transport eggs and 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 this kind of things, special. In 2009, we started uh, to in the, our international internationalization. We started to be present in, in some uh, in some international textile fairs like hemp textile, tech textile, and, and more uh, more fairs and. Uh, from this moment, we started to be present in the five continents. Now, uh, in Bas are present in, in 
in all the continents, in America, in Australia, in, uh, in Europe, uh, and we are recognized as a specialist. The, the challenges for, 2000, for 2020, from 2020, is to, digit, to develop new projects and to, uh, digit, to start the digitalization of, comp of this company. Uh, now we, we are implementing, we are in our implementing process to, to control our production uh, by sensors and new, new softwares to control in real time all of our products and all of product production. Uh, what are, what do we produce? We produce uh, ribbons and curtain tapes. Uh, this is our most popular product. And, and also we manufacture technical tapes for industrial use. Uh, as I say, agriculture, uh, technical clothing, reinforcement, and also we are involved uh, with the European community in new projects for the uh, tapes uh, to digitalize some sectors as uh, sanitary and as uh, agriculture. And the applications of our, of our tapes uh, are the home, means uh, means we can we can use our tapes to to manufacture curtain tapes we we use uh, our tapes for industrial uses fashion uh, bags uh, fashion uh, transport decoration we are we are involved in decoration we can we, we produce cores and, and, and tapes to to wheel uh, some curtains uh, to to use as uh, as um, as a decoration in uh, in windows and also for leisure and for healthcare. With the last year, with the with the COVID, uh, the COVID, we developed a lot of uh, new tapes and elastic tapes and cores to be used for masks. And more and more, uh, people are asking for different applications. We use uh, as a course for shoes, uh, for flax, uh, uh, to be used as a uh, as, uh, leisure for, for, uh, for different application means that, that the cores and the tapes are something that are part of uh, a lot of uh, products uh, in our life. And more and more people are looking for uh, new applications and for more specializing applications. And more and more as, as, a, as a technical manufacturers, people are asking to implement more details, more, more, um, more things, more use uh, uses for our tapes, and, and uh, in our in our in our strategy is to implement uh, more things in more things in our in our tapes. And concerning the virtual images, virtual reality, and augmented reality, uh, what is our point of view that could be used in our in our business? Okay, we see that in our business nowadays we are starting to work in this way. Uh, we are starting to work in 3D uh, images and uh, 360 products. It means that uh, we are we are working in flat products that uh, it's it's really complicated sometimes to understand uh, how how people can use our product and. Uh, that in commercial terms, we are now using uh, 3D uh, images to uh, show in our uh, to our clients how looks our products, okay, and also in, in, to generate the computer images to help a client to see uh, how looks this product ap uh, applied in a uh, in curtain in curtain, for example, and this is the other example. Uh, this way we are using in our new website and also uh, a lot of our clients are using to show and to help our our their customers to decide how looks um, the, the product uh, final uh, final manufacture okay also in commercial applications uh, we are not using now but uh, we think that uh, the, the client uh, ask more and more to have uh, a new a new experience. Clients like uh, to see uh, to know how uh, how is uh, the, the work of the of the of the, 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 the manufacturer to 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 give them information to give to be more confident 
and uh, we expect in the future uh, maybe to show our our uh, our our company our our installations our factory to show uh, to our clients that they understand our business that they understand our 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 our, our prejudice and uh, could be something in commercial terms that uh, that uh, could uh, could help us uh, also because we are working with professionals and they must understand how is the reality of our of our business of our job and also augmented uh, augmented reality uh, is also something like like we say uh, not only how to apply uh, the tapes in in, uh, in the core things it's something that we can offer some uh, app to to help our clients to decide uh, how looks uh, our tapes in different in different parts of the uh, the home we can uh, apply our tapes uh, cushions uh, we can apply uh, our tapes in, in other places of the, the, from the decoration for example and uh, and could be could be nice in a future help uh, help our clients final clients not only b2b and also to introduce our now how to b2c to help our clients to decide and, and to to work and to play with our with our tapes in a, in in a, in a part industrial part for in, a, in terms of applications um, we think that could be helpful for, for us uh, in terms of design because our processes our processes are, are complicated and also if we have a chance to to see the how to work one tape uh, how to design one tape and before to to use an, or to spend a lot of time to to design in a, in a, in a, in a looms uh, also we imagine that this uh, this reality could be could be nice uh, to to design to see to see what the what, how to work uh, each each uh, tape also in terms of uh, maintenance and support uh, of our looms of our industry uh, can guide us uh, and work with our with our those techniques technicians uh, to explain uh, how it works our machine how to to implement something uh, in our in our in our machines how to do how uh, how to manage our our our, our maintenance and, uh, and some preparations also more industrial application in a, in a production processes we imagine also the, to have monitored and super to supervise remotely uh, our processes and, and, and supervise how how, uh, how is working our machines our looms or our, our our different processes also we are in quality control we are now in our plans to implement some uh, high speed cameras that control uh, if the tapes are uh, producing under the standards uh, this is something that is really interesting because more and more people are asking for uh, more uh, more detail more exactly dimensions more uh, more uh, more technical tapes and it's it's really important uh, to detect if there is some uh, some some trouble some problems in a, in a production and uh, we need to implement some uh, some uh, before before start the production on the algorithms and photos uh, how is the how, how we need what we are looking for and uh, during the, 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 the production process uh, the cameras can control if everything is okay and uh, and say if uh, we start we continue or we stop the production in time in terms of training we imagine that uh, and that people we can we can train people uh, to for some of our processes using using the virtual reality that could be less dangerous and can help us uh, for training of people because we are in, in, a, in a job that uh, is more and more and more specialized and we need uh, to introduce this kind of things uh, uh, to to help our our new employees and in terms of in logistic terms uh, introduce uh, link of uh, rfda uh, radio frequencies 
and also introduce new uh, new kind of um, uh, of images, virtual images, to 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 detect, to to introduce, to to count, to 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 see how to move inside our 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 installations, all of our products. Uh, this is more or less that uh, we are expect we are expecting with these uh, this, uh, these new technologies and we think that in the next future some of them for example as, as I say some of them we are expect to, to implement in, a, in, a, in the next future thank you Thank you very much, Salvador. It was an awesome presentation. Uh, we will keep now the questions for the end of the session. So uh, this way we can continue and then we will group them all together at, at the end. So okay. with, the, with that said, thank you very much again for your presentation. Uh, we will now move over to another textile company, uh, Estamperia d'Alberto, with Hugo Miranda. Uh, Hugo, uh, can you open the camera or and the mic? Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. Hello, Thank Jennifer. you very much. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the floor is yours, and thank you very much for participating here. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to try to be fast. Adalberto Ad Albert is a vertical company in textile area with 51 years old of now. -law. We are from Portugal, uh, some fish near to Porto. We are one of the largest stamping companies in Europe. We work a lot in dye and printing area. Uh, basically, we receive the raw material uh, in a raw form and transform it uh, into a final uh, finished products. Uh, we work in two major areas. Uh, fashion and um, textiles. We export uh, to dozens of countries, almost 90% of our production. Uh, we have, have the production capacity of 10,000 of meters per day, uh, whatever in printing or dyeing. Uh, and we have an innovation department at the tech uh, that they're going to explain the project today. Uh, from this department. Uh, basically, in that department, we solve problems, develop tools, uh, products, service, capital collections, innovate, innovate in product uh, production process, and also analyze and test last technologies. In the last year, we accelerate some MVPs uh, that we had done internal, internal, as an internal strategy and have uh, with the project with some strategic clients. Uh, after we had validated them um, and start implementing uh, this kind of technology and process into our pipeline in the normal uh, industrial process. And today I'm going to present some results uh, we apply in a, in a, that we apply in a capsule collection that we present in, in a textile fair uh, last year. So I will explain the practical process of 100% uh, biodegradable and ecological collection uh, with the idea of use less water, less energy, and, uh, le and have less waste of material. Uh, whatever we use, 3D uh, and augmented reality and virtual reality and industrial process as a, a marketing uh, tool. Usually, uh, in a normal process, our design team to make the 2D designs of pieces, colors, printings, and we starting uh, the production of the raw material, uh, selecting uh, accessories. Uh, then during the knitting process, we start to make the, the patterns, and uh, only after the fabric is made, we make the cutting, manufacturing process, and and make some, and we starting uh this process of making some change on, on patterns making the uh, uh the manufacturing and cutting again starting this cycling process uh of the last phase until we have the patterns and the pieces how the clients want uh in this process we can take between five days to five weeks depending 
or not if you have the fabric and accessories and uh, etc so uh, we starting using the, the 3d process uh, uh, basically after the work of the designers we make the patterns we modeling the entire collection in 3d uh, and uh, in that way uh, we test the the patterns and make the adjustments uh in a virtual avatars with the, the measures that we intend without make any uh, any physical pieces uh, uh until we get the perfect uh, pattern uh, uh, and adjustments uh, th that that is very important because we can adjust patterns uh, for the body type or for sizes per market uh before uh, making any any pieces with the 3D, we try to simulate uh, the, the fall of the real fabrics in order to have the best simulation of the real. In other words, we can scan the textures, the physical characteristic of the fabric. Uh, and uh, after making the, the patterns, we scanning and make the numerical simulate of the characteristic of the fabric. For that, we for in the end, we we do the render that is to approximate the models um, to the photograph or videos to the real ones. How you can see this presentation in the left, uh, we have the real fabric, uh, and uh, and the other image is uh, is the simulation of the real. This is the result of some uh, models developed in the uh, 3D uh, simulation. This is the renders. Um, in an industrial process, uh, 3D offers immerse, immerse, immense advantage, normally reducing the timelines, reduce the costs, but in terms also in sustainability, since there's less waste of raw materials, natural and energy resource, and also reducing the carbon footprint in the logistic process. In this case, the physical pieces uh, as made, and we present uh, at, in, in the fair, but we only made one pieces. Uh, instead of make several prototypes uh, to have the final pieces, uh, we only made a prototype that serves as a final pieces. Um, in this case, uh, the final piece is, was made, uh, but um, but uh, could not have been done. Uh, we are starting to have a relation with some customers that the approvals are made uh, through the, the 3D uh, digital models, uh, where fittings, patterns, details, design can be tested, and prints, colors, accessories, ever model combination can be analyzed. And the client is starting to to make uh, the approvals only through these kind of photos or videos of the the, the 3D models. During the process, we also develop a proprietary software uh, that helps us to create uh, value-added products, where we can connect the drawings between uh, the various parts of the model, uh, managing uh, greatly the reduce of consumption of the raw materials uh, and manufacturing cutting time compared to the normal process. Uh, normally to to make this localized print is in the in the in the close we we make um, uh, we use a lot of uh, a lot of fabrics. Uh, normally we use uh, projection uh, for cutting uh, and uh, and so on and with this process we can print uh, the 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 patterns with the, with the, the, the designs uh, and uh, and we can reduce the cutting uh, consumption uh, of fabric of the waste um, and the 3d is super important to to able to visualize how the drawing will look in the end in order to have the perfect fit Customers can also have a great advantage uh, here. Uh, they also can test the models through the catalogs, through the social networks, without having made a single piece. 
to better match quantities uh, of the order by model. They can analyze likes, shares, uh, they can analyze better what the market wants. So we have clients that are starting making, uh, because of the, the times, they are starting making uh, and using 3D um, that we make. They are starting to use the 3D in catalogs. They present to the shops that uh, and retailers. And when they make the order, they 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 make the order uh, instead of make, for example, select. I want to make the order on 1,000 pieces of blue t-shirts and 1,000 pieces of uh, red t-shirts. They are starting to make orders like one. I want to make order of 1,000 and. 500 pieces of blue t-shirts and only 500 t-shirts of uh, red ones. In this case, they 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 can analyze better what uh, the market uh, wants. Custom also can use as a marketing tool. Uh, for example, this is example uh, of videos that we create. Uh, the, the 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 client can use. This kind of videos and animation as a marketing, but also we can present our collections, our print collections through the virtual catwalks uh, and show new prints before of uh, making uh, uh, any prints in any fabric. Uh, this is another example uh, that of our new collection that we are presenting some prints uh, in the virtual uh, catwalk. We also using uh, in this collection um, and with the client uh, virtual reality. Uh, Virtual real technology we using platforms like Instagram. Uh, the idea is to give the customers uh, and and demonstrate to the customers the added value of the pieces. In this case, uh, you ex for example, we uh, we scan we make a scan uh, image recognition of the the label, and what with the with that we can show the traceability. Uh, of the entire uh, entire fabric, uh, the added value of the entire piece. We also can make some gamifications, uh, and for example, in this uh, in this example, we use elements of the print of the collection to create uh, a filter. Uh, the idea is is to give uh, to have some. Uh, Create uh, some viral content for the brands, and they can activate uh, their products. Uh, other thing is is try to give bring uh, life to the clothes. In this case, we have some prints in collection that uh, we have the image recognition, and we starting animate the the image that we have in a, in a T-shirt. Or in this case, we can make some gamification with elements of the the collection. Even to test products, for example, in this case we have uh, added a mask. Uh, is one of the our developers. So we use the first mask to kill SARS-CoV-2. This is a product that we sell, and we had thousands of interactions in this filter where people can try the virtual our virtual mask. Of course all this has a meaning the objective of giving these uh, these uh, tools um, to, uh, to the customers uh, is they can transmit the added value to the the end consumers okay uh, this is the, the 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 objective of the use of this kind of uh, tools. Um, more and more sales are on are made in online uh, after the, this pandemic, and the content like traceability storytelling is very important for e-commerce and uh, and uh, and is is the trend through is a trend to the omni-channel auto simulate. Uh, we also simulate. Uh, here uh, we made a kiosk uh, that uh, basically we we test also the concept of omnichannel. 
uh, because, because we made the, the contents for uh, for um, and give ideas of online content for e-commerce, but also uh, for client to 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 show uh, the the added value of the pieces in a stores. Uh, we create a movie that uh, clients uh, can interact uh, with the pieces. The movie recognized automatically. The, the pieces and we in the end they can see the entire storytelling for example in this ecological collection uh, we are the beginning of the supply chain so we have to make the efforts of the educate the brands and they have come and the end consumers about the important of sustainable and biodegradable products and the good practice of responsible uh, production uh, and this technology are a tool of teaching and transmitting the added value of these products, the, the transport, the transparent process of manufacturing through the website with interactive MOPI or in a store or even in the home by scanning a, a QR code. Uh, there is a time to market of our, these product projects, um, uh -huh. service, uh, for example, with the, Augmented reality, some of these technology have been uh, known for several years, but there are two super important components we usually in use of this type of solutions. The first is the cost uh, of these projects uh, that we developed we must have a right. Uh, that is, uh, it must be technologically, financially viable project uh, uh, that has some added value. And then there is a question of the technology literacy uh, on part of customer and final customer. We have to be comfortable with the use of this type of solutions, mm -hmm. which often leads us to refer reformulate the entire architecture in terms of programming language, adaptability and user interface. Uh, usually customers are comfortable with mobile phones, social networks, so the interface and the logic of interaction uh, must be similar so that no, there is no inertia uh, in the use of this solution. I think that argumented reality and virtual reality uh, will have the great use in marketing, marketing content customization in also industrial process. Uh, one of the most uses will be the training. training uh, someone in textile area takes several years uh, and we are losing more and more label uh, and we have to attract young people to this area and demonstrate that this area is more technological than they think and augmented reality mixed reality and virtual going to help to to giving training more easily interactively in the manufacturing uh, in industrial process and maintenance i think 5g uh, will help this technology to mature because the, for the pro pro processing capacities reasons uh, we'll have uh, decentralized processing of this kind of tools uh, for that uh, we will have very fast internet speed and i think that uh, the game changing gonna be with uh, 6g uh, uh, where these all these technology will be uh, consolidated. And thank you. Thank you very much, Hugo. It has been a, an amazing presentation as well. And as I mentioned before, we will keep the, all the questions till the uh, end of the session. So the last minutes of the webinar will be dedicated to questions. Uh, in case some of you have, may have any questions, please post it in the chat for any of the speakers and we'll collect them by the end of the session. And again, thanks a lot, Hugo, for sharing your experiences you. and, and views. And now we will go to the other side. So we are going to have a couple of talks on the advanced manufacturing sol uh, solutions. So first we will start with Mathieu Botelier from Orinox. Uh, I think you have the floor and you are going to talk us about uh, improved plant reliability using VR. So. Uh, Maybe you can hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, great. So thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
thank you for uh, uh, including us in this uh, this webinar uh, let's go ahead Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I think we have you in two, in two slots. That's okay. Can you talk? 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 Can you We cannot hear you. I don't know if you. Matthew, we do not listen to you. We do not listen to you, Matthew. No, we cannot listen to you? No. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, maybe it's easier if you uh, close and reopen the program, maybe it's sometimes. Yes, uh, if if it's okay for you, we can uh, wait if it's...
Okay, apologies. Uh, we will get it back as he gets back to the floor. In the meanwhile, uh, I would uh, like to remind you that you can continue posting uh, questions on the chat and we will take them over at the end of the session. So let's see now. It works. So. Apologies for the technical problems that we are facing, but hope to get them uh, back live as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, we have the as I try to solve these technical problems, we will follow up the, some of the Q&As from the previous section so that we can uh, keep the session ongoing. Uh, so I would uh, pose a question for Hugo and Salvador. Uh, uh, one question that I got on the chat is if you can uh, turn on your cameras, uh, maybe for Augmented reality and virtual reality, we need a killer app in order to make it something more than something nice to play with. Uh, do you have an idea on what that would be? A consumer app, try at home, maintenance, what is the current problem? And is it the concept, the hardware, or the added value? So maybe Salvador or Hugo could address this question in a while. I think we lost also some of the speakers. Yeah, Hugo? Hi. Hi. Do you want me to repeat the question or? Yeah, 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 please. Because yes. Yes. Yeah, so. so for the augmented reality, virtual reality, we need a killer app in order to make it something more than nice to play with technology. Uh, <laughs> do you have any idea on what that could be? A consumer app, a try at home, maintenance, um, and also as a second part of the question, which do you think it's a main current problem? It is the concept, the hardware, the added value, the return on investment? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, this kind of, uh, I, I don't know if it's gonna be a, a killer app, I think that this kind of technology is going to be uh, every, every uh, one going to be online, like uh, a browser, um, a browser app, if I can say, uh, because uh, several uh, industries are going to be used in a different way. Uh, for example, we can use the same platform uh, or the same kind of uh, technology, but for example, to be to be products or interaction uh, or in an industrial process and others maybe going to use um, the cl and then client going to use for activation brand or 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 to to um, to analyze body types or to try to clothes virtual clothes um, I, I think that uh, with uh, um, with, in the future, the, this kind of technologies uh, with resolving the problems of internet velocity, uh, because uh, is one of the problems uh, uh, is the memory consumption of this kind of solutions. Um, and uh, you can have animations, for example, uh, or imagine that you have uh, you you wanna 
want uh, for using for the teaching. Uh, and you you can have an app that you make the recognition of the the some uh, some machine and starting tell you uh, the parts of the machine and uh, what you uh, what you need to do interactively. Uh, this kind of resource have uh, consumption a lot of memory and uh, you have two solutions. One, putting this memory in the app. And when you make download a app, you have need to make download of the entire entire uh, contents of uh, of this interaction, or in that way, other way, you have in the in the server, and uh, you need a big velocity of internet for that. You know, uh, I, I think that um, the the growth of this kind of technologies is 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 parallel to the growth of the the technology technology part. Okay. Um, also, the parts of uh, the creating this kind of uh, computes um, uh, is not. I don't say that it's expensive. No, uh, five or ten years ago is uh, most expensive that now. But I think that in the future gonna more easy, uh, more inexpensive, and everything counts um, because we are in a in a market uh, of manufacturing and uh, everything that we ne we make we have have a ROI uh, and because of that of course you can use the ROI of creating a relationship of the the clients uh, but in the end you have a ROI and of course everything counts the the technology the price uh, and the the easy way or not of uh, of uh, of use this kind of Technology and create content for this kind of technology. Okay, thank you a lot for your uh, your uh, answer. It's really useful to to learn about. Uh, let's try with Matthew once more. Can you please turn on your camera and your mic? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, now perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm okay. just gonna activate my webcam. Yes. I'm back. Okay, okay, so thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you for inviting Renox to this uh, meeting. Uh, we're gonna just uh, introduce uh, one of uh, a way to improve plant reliability using VR and R. AR, uh, it's pretty linked with the industrial plant area, and we're gonna just see how we can move in the uh, in another domain that we are not focusing right now, which is the textile one. Uh, so I will start the presentation. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so, first thing that uh, Orinox is a specialist company which is uh, uh, focusing on digital transition and uh, industrial digitalization. Uh, what we are focusing on is uh, to, to deploy smart resources and empower industry with innovative solutions. Um, mean that uh, we are developing um, for more than uh, 10 years uh, new products. Uh, in a direct link with the industrial uh, plant area. Uh, some key numbers in our location. Um, so we are about uh, 12 million revenue in 2020 with uh, 100 and, uh, 110 customers. Six offices which are based, uh, three in, uh, in France, one in, uh, in Middle East and two in North America, uh, Houston and Calgary. In France, we are based in Paris and in the west of the France and in the south. Um, actually, we are investing about uh, 600,000 uh, euros in uh, R&D to um, maintain and develop uh, the more efficient products uh, to ensure that all the information are, um, and all the data of, of, of any Industrial products are accessible, um, are accurate, and uh, 
uh, or all those information at, at the at the good moment. So as you can see here, we are working in, in different industries, uh, which are nuclear, food and beverage, oil and gas, um, energy environment, and ultra clean, clean process, which include pharmaceutical and microelectronics one. Um, just as mentioned before, we are uh, moving in a, in another way to uh, to access the information. So one of the topics of the of, of, of this meeting is to focus on AR and VR, and we have developed uh, Orinox Simulator product, which is um, uh, with with its first aim of the product is to uh, uh, emulate uh, any object. Any uh, it can be uh, an object. It can be uh, uh, a, 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 an entire industrial plant and get uh, 3D. Uh, representation of it using AR, uh, we are using Microsoft HoloLens technology, and linked all the information of um, the assets uh, that is built for, for this, this, this subject. So it means get uh, the information of any weight, any, uh, I don't know, but uh, we can also say the, the flow, the tag number, the designee is the description of the object, uh, it means get uh, an access to documents too. So it can be a notice, it can be a, a maintenance um, um, booklet or something like this. Um, based on our technology, we are including lots of uh, functionality that I can will show you uh, just after, which are a large object library. That uh, of course you can have your own model, but which is not fully um, uh, finished, and you can also uh, add object library, uh, which is mean uh, extingu extinguisher or, or anything that you can find in the, in the plant area, and also avatars uh, that can be included in the in the three model. Just to go more on the VR aspect of our product, um, we we have three three ways to to, um, to to develop our products. The first one is to get the graphics information and all the data linked to the graphics to give you an access in VR and in AR of your 3D object. The first uh, aspect is review it. So get an access, a presentation of it, give it, give an access of your assets to your collaborators, to your customers, or uh, and, and anything else. Um, you can also create some scenarios inside the inside the 3D model that you can see on the left, on the bottom left here. There is a scenario creator that allow you to. Uh, give a gu guidance of your, the user to see what it, sh it should see and in, in, a, in the right order. Uh, then you can have some uh, object hotspotting then give an access to uh, focusing on, on uh, one object and get all the information linked, linked to this object. Then, uh, based on our experience of industrial plants, we have defined some ergonomics review uh, using VR. Then, given access to the, the to the the, uh, to the the people who are working on the units to know if the ergonomics of the plants is uh, efficient or not. And the the third one uh, is safe and efficiency training system. It means that uh, you can also include a training system and different tasks to allow the, your collaborators to identify and, um, and train them on specific, um, on specific procedure. I mean, uh, it's, it can be a start and stop equipment, it can be the um, locked, uh, locked and locked uh, uh, lot of procedure, sorry and uh, it can be done using VR and AR. So just to focus on the, on the main features, so what we are focusing on is um, get 3D model, 
get information linked to the 3D model, get documents, manage the task and scenarios that you want to, um, which one you want to drive your collaborators of your, or your customers, of your, uh, the, the people who will interact with, uh, with the object. You can also in the in the VR um, in the VR aspect of the training session, you can also uh, create multiplayer sessions for safety rules, for example, or uh, maintenance or production procedure. Now, all of our products, which is the Renox uh, simulator, is ready for AR and VR. It's a plug and play um, option that uh, it's it's all based in a, it's based on the cloud information so you have direct access to your accounts using um, um, a, a software and uh, then you can get back your 3d model all your digital your digital assets and it's ready for use with Microsoft Alliance or um, HTC Vive if you want to use a PC and we are um, ready for use with smartphone and tablets too. Just a um, few main reference so just have a look on it but we are working on industrial plants right now. Just to um, be um, very um, um, open with our solution uh, it's it's a ready to evaluate solution so we you can have an access to directly uh, our Linux cloud web web uh, web platform create an account you can upload your 3d model uh, that's uh, the the file formats uh, available are fbx fbx or rvm which is aviva file format that we are specialized on but the fbx ones um, it's pretty well and then you can build your own model and link documents to your 3d model and then go live with any device by uh, downloading the application uh, or in a simulator uh, and get an access to your 3d model with smartphone tablets pc and using vr or ar thank you Okay, thank you very much uh, for your nice, a very nice presentation. Uh, I think we had some issues with uh, uh, with the next speaker, so we will uh, that we were expecting. Uh, so in the meanwhile, we will do some Q and A for. I think I'm the next speaker, Is that okay. right? Uh, Hello, yes. good afternoon, good morning. Good afternoon. Okay, so. And I'll give you the floor because yeah, thank you very much. Different name, so yes, okay. So thank you very One much. One second, I'm... sharing. Yes. Can you all see my screen? Um, not yet. Let me see. Uh, screen sharing is paused. Close the organizer. Uh, you should turn my camera. No, uh, shut on by the organizer. Okay, yeah, uh, show it. Okay, yeah. It says screen sharing is paused by the organizer. Um, let me do something. I think you are in control. Okay, let me. Yeah, You should have the okay. presenter role. Okay, sharing. Share my webcam as well. We cannot see your screen. Maybe you need to confirm the. I already did. I already did. Let me stop stop sharing and restart it. Give me one second, please. I will share the entire screen. Let's see if it's better this way. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so Sorry for for the 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 name, but I'm using another yeah. person's account. In the, yeah. could, okay. 
Okay. Okay. My name is Rui Barrera. Okay. I'm I'm here with with Nid, with Nid Vance. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about local approaches to the industry 4.0. But before we start talking about technology, let me take you to a journey in time and drive you back to 1765 for the first industrial revolution, where coal, machinery, iron and steel, and new processes allowed societies in Europe and America to go from agrarian societies to industrialized ones. Moving one step forward in 1870, the second industrial revolution had a similar basis. New sources of energy, electricity came in, new communications, and new synthetic materials, and gave rise to the first basic automatic factories. In 1969, we had the first computers. Nuclear energy was around, and telecommunications, and all this allowed us to think about space expeditions, research, and biotech. And this leads us back to 2015, where the first, the fourth industrial revolution started. And the basis of this revolution are the Internet of Things, collaborative robots, virtual reality, and AI. And for the first time in history, this is changing not just the way we work, but also the way we live. And it's doing it in an exponential way, instead of a linear way. So, Focusing on cyber physical systems, which is the very basic of the fourth industrial revolution right next to communications, we can talk about embedded systems. And embedded systems are computing systems for specific purposes. Today they are everywhere, in your car, in your watch, in your house. They are getting more and more and more complex. Joining the communications, we need to have interconnectivity, command and control networks, geotagging, power grids, medical devices. And all of this is what supports the fourth industrial revolution. But it's going exponentially. Yes, we build on already existing embedded computing systems. We interact more and more with the physical environment. And we are building systems of, of systems. So we need to co-design the cyber and the physical part as well as we engineer systems of systems. Yes, but our biggest concern right now is that we lack skilled people to do this. That, that is true, but the truth is that we have a triple problem and not just one, we have three problems. Lack of people, we have lack of software developers, we have lack of, of people with knowledge in computer science, but we also have to develop new architectures for computer vision, for AI, for automation and robotics to make the systems more connected faster, safer, and we also have our time to line. We are under pressure with time. The world is growing exponentially. And today, 75% of time while we are developing a machine for a factory, for example, is spent on software development. And around 25% is spent on debugging. So how do we make this faster? How do we solve this problem? Our approach and what we believe is low code. We are using a low-code approach where minimal hand coding is needed to develop faster solutions to allow the citizen developer. This means that you don't need to be a software developer to deliver software. You just need to know your context. And with patterns and already an abstracted solutions, quality and performance is built in. So it's just drag, drop, and execute. You just select your tools build a workflow, drop it, execute it in a machine, get your result. Looks easy, right? Yes, but how about the tools? We do need to build the tools to make this happen. And to build these tools, we need to think about two abstractions. The first one is the hardware abstraction. How do we communicate with robots, with cameras, with all kinds of machinery that we have around us? And we allow space for customizations while we do it. On the other side, we have the problems abstractions. We know that we have several common problems in the while we build machines for industry 4.0. So we need to abstract them and build tools to solve these problems out of the box with proved solutions. Software development does that. We design patterns for years and years. But the most important thing is that we need to keep innovating and living new tools every single day. This is the only way we can accelerate enough for the industrial revolution to happen. So in a nutshell, can a teenager do it? We believe yes. 
please follow this video. It's only one minute. The program is designed. Now we're going to run the program. So can a teenager do a program in a matter of minutes that can recognize a QR code? Yes, yes, we believe that yes, he can. He can do it and can do it very easily using low code. I know this is a very basic use case, but I, I believe you get the point. More complexity only needs more tools or more domain knowledge to make it happen. But what about AI? I haven't talked about AI yet, but if we add AI to the mix, and AI allows machines to mimic human intelligence, machines to think, to sense, and to realize and decide on inputs and act on them. Today, we have the power, the miniaturization, and the cost of hardware to bring AI to real-time decision-making in the lines. And with low code, it's just another set of tools. It's just one more tool that you put in your workflow to solve a real problem. So in the end, and quoting Teresa Martins, our, our CEO, if you merge the power of robotics, computer vision, and, and AI in a simple and easy to use user interface, you get access to a very, very, very powerful set of tools that will allow non-experts to build software for the industry with quality, safety, and performance, while bridging the gap between the physical and the virtual world. As a last statement, I would like to keep this idea in your heads and quoting Professor Klaus Schwab, Change can be frightening, and temptation is often to resist it. But change almost always provides opportunities to learn new things, to rethink tired processes, and to improve how we work. In the advance, with the NIA platform, and with local approach we have to the industry, we make this happen in an easy, user-friendly way. But as a very, very personal note, in the end, never forget that we are all humans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rui. Uh, and apologies for the mistake on the on the name on finding you. So Don't worry. With, uh, with that said, I would uh, like uh, now ask you and Matthew on the, the previous speaker uh, uh, one quick question to the both of you uh, related to the future. So, and the textile sector has a lot of relevance on the feeling of touch for the different products. Uh, how do you see this could be integrated in the next round of virtual reality, haptic devices, and how could this be addressed to be highly impactful in the textile sector, for example? If you allow me to, to, to go first on this yes. one. Um, um, I believe that interconnectivity, integration between multiple devices, sensing and acting de devices, uh, is the key for the industry to achieve the needed quality and performance uh, to deliver what the world is asking. Uh, we at the advance, we see ourselves as a hub, as an aggregator of all this technology and as the platform to allow anyone or almost anyone to connect these, these devices, to add specific tools and to very easily and quickly develop the software you need to solve specific problems for embedded systems. So this is how, how I see it. I see it moving fast, faster every day. I think exponential is the word here. Um, and with local 
techniques attached with innovative IoT device or acting devices. Uh, I believe that the industry can move faster than ever before. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Matthew, I don't know if you are still there, if you could also look into that. Matthew may have some problems with the internet. Uh, once again, I would like to thank you all for participating uh, here and for all your ex excellent presentations. And despite some technical difficulties during some of the parts. And lastly, before closing session, can I would I, like. Can I, sorry, can I just add one, one last thing? Um, sure. Very, very quickly. Uh, yes. Nuno Fernandes, my colleague, will be available for B2B meetings uh, afterwards. Yes. Okay, please reach him if you if you need to talk to us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I will. Like myself. Yeah. I would like to remind you to participate in the B2B meetings. You have the the Plantex Virtual Marketplace with over 170 participants that you can uh, contact and meet. So I would uh, encourage you all to schedule meetings and participate and talk to them uh, because next week we are going to talk about funding opportunities. Some of those opportunities will require uh, uh, partnerships between different companies to address different solutions. So I would encourage you all to participate in the B2B meetings, uh, identify potential partners, potential suppliers, customers, uh, to get to know each other and use this uh, really nice platform for that. And next week we will have the final webinar of the Climate Virtual Marketplace with the EU funding opportunities for textile and advanced manufacturing companies uh, in Europe. So looking forward for next week and wish you a happy, happy week. So thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye.